Before I start this video, I want to give a special thank you to Voltage for helping me with patch notes. Furthermore, if you want to skip to the setup directly, timestamp is on screen. The Zenistar, a forgotten relic of a bygone era. The Zenistar to many might seem as an MR fodder weapon with middling damage and slow attack speed. While its flame disc might seem interesting, its damage capabilities are quite low overall. And because of this, it's usually the logging weapon that is skipped, picked over others like the Zenith. However, many older players will fondly remember the days of Zenistar taking over the entire meta, becoming one of the faces of melee dominance for a period of time. So today, let's dive in and make the Zenistar great again. The Zenistar on its release post Second Dream was the new Day 300 login reward. The logins post Second Dream have been updated, now saving player logins and introducing milestones. The Azima was first introduced on Day 100, Prime Fury on Day 200, then Zenistar on Day 300. During this era of the game, melee weapons were quite powerful. We had Maiming Strike, Old Range, melees hitting through walls, and of course the classic Spin to Win staples. Talos Voltes, Adorax, and Secure Electa, with other various melees dipping their toes in for red crits. Melees that could abuse Maiming Strike were extremely strong, but what does Zenistar offer? At first glance, it seems like a weak heavy blade with middling stats. Not a good luck when your competitor is Galaxy Prime, which had incredible slash and crit. Well, the Zenistar had one thing. The Flame Disc. Upon heavy swing, the Zenistar Disc would launch out of the melee, hovering onto the area. Then, shortly after, the flames erupt, damaging everything within its grasp. You might be wondering, well, the stats were quite low back then for Zenistar, so how did the disc make up for it? A couple of things, but the most important one is range. Old melee range was a percent. This means melee weapons that had a high base range would benefit more from prime range. Whole arms were some of the best for its high range, and Orthos Prime would hit up to 13 meters on a strike, which is prime range. And with the introduction of melee ribbons, these weapons would hit even higher range values, since it was all percent based, not a flat increase. The Zenistar was a heavy blade, so it naturally had higher base range, but more importantly, the disc had high base range too. Using prime reach on the Zenistar disc, the flames would cover a huge distance locking down the entire area. And with melee range going through walls back then, skipping barriers and line of sights, as well as geometry, the flame disc would strike enemies continuously, which made it excellent as CC and status spreading. Furthermore, during the initial release, the disc had no duration, meaning you can toss the Zenny disc outwards and completely AFK. As a result, the Zenny Star became a coveted tool for AFK farming and endurance missions. Its damage, on the other hand, was really good, using various setups and multipliers to its advantage. You see, upon getting stealth, your melee gains a damage multiplier. This boost is 8 times, but because of stealth multipliers bugging with melees on certain elements, this 8 times could go even higher. On Slash, it would double dip for a new 64x multiplier, which is really strong. But you might be wondering, the Zenistar does not deal Slash on the wave, which is true. It has an 8 heat, but you can take this heat to infuse it with Toxin for gas. Now upon stealth, the gas would not just double dip, but also triple dip, which yielded a new 512x multiplier. Pair this with the insane range, the Zenistar would lock down an entire room for decades on end, scaling extraordinarily well into the late game. This was also the old enemy scaling, so enemies were far beefier back then with more EHP. The Zenny Disc was also excellent on Corpus and Void, not just Grenier and Infested. This is because the Disc would take care of any nullifiers within Radius, so not only was it capable but also versatile. The Zenny Star became a classic staple for Ivara, as players soon discover that Ivara can control the disc as it launched outwards on Heavy. This means you can control a huge flaming disc of death while boosting its damage while also being invisible from Prowl. This gave the Zenistar Star disc huge mobility that was lacking on the base. This tech was then used on the indoor index map, allowing Ivara to camp on an energy pad while controlling a disc of flaming fury while wiping the map in a matter of seconds, but also used in various missions as it was really useful. Great on survival, interceptions, defense, and so on. Because of the high utility and damage the disc offered, this made Zenistar one of the best melees in Endurance run. Especially if you were not running a spin to and setup, because I'm gonna be honest, some days my pinky fingers weren't up to par. So running a Zenistar with a different setup was a breath of fresh air, allowing for more relaxed setups and survivals. Find a camp spot, toss the disc out, and GG's. Life of Rio, Summit, Baker, and other various Endurance creators had taken the Zenistar to new heights in endgame, especially with the Tsar as the combo was really effective for DPS. Having enemies affected by the Zenny disc then nuked from a Tsar was really potent. 
Saren also loved these any star as this was during the spore spam rework where Saren could cast spores on the malt. The meatless Saranos was excellent for this, but Zeni Star was also a good option. Launching the Zeni Disc over Molt and spamming spores would yield great results, unsurprisingly. Vauban was another one and a personal one, as I had used the strategy many times in Corpus Survivals. Casting Vortex, then launching the disc outwards to deal damage, and even more so in hiding behind a wall. Yes, that's how non-invis frames gain stealth. Old Warframe was definitely an era, to say the least. Mirage was also insane as she could duplicate the Zenny Discs with her Shadow Clones. The Disc would also gain buffs from Vex Armor, which was a multiplicative bonus before Shrines of the Eidolon. Another common setup was using Chroma with Concealed Explosives to force Vex Armor. Then launching the Disc modded for Gas, gaining Stealth Gas on top of the Fury buff made for a super chill endurance setup. As with Chroma, you'd surpass the 512x multiplier limit. Furthermore, the Disc also had interesting interactions with Life Strike. Before the melee updates, Life Strike was was activated upon channeling, which was an old melee mechanic that let users channel energy to empower melee hits. The disc, for some reason, counted towards channeling, so this meant if you toss the disc out and channel, you'd regenerate HP very fast and even faster with attack speed boosts, since the disc flames would pulsate faster and faster with more attack speed. The Chroma Dynasty collection dropped. Unfortunately, the scaly textures of the work in progress were dumped for a more metallic approach, but the Dominion Heavy Blade skin that released had a very unique bug with the Zenny Star in particular. Yeah, it was really big. Like, gigantic. Because of this odd bug, players use Zenny Star more and more just for the appeal of having a gigantic heavy blade on their back, and thus DE kept this interaction as a now feature, which works to this day. Just equip the skin on your Zenny Star and voila. Come melee ribbons, the spin twin meta became even more chaotic with ranged ribbons obliterating the map. The Skoliak took the new throne for slide spamming, but Zenny Star is creeping in the shadows with ranged ribbons boosting his range to 30 meters plus. With more damage and attack speed, very good Zenny ribbons were going for over 5,000 platinum on the market, and it's no surprise. The weapon was insanely strong and with a good ribbon, could boost it to new heights. On a side note, with the release of Spring Loaded Blade, this amped the Zenny Star's range by another 30%. Unfortunately, come Beasts of Sanctuary and the Dev Workshop in 2018, melees were going to be changed, straying away from the spin twin meta and moving forward into a more engaging and dynamic melee system, one that is healthy and quote, interactive. Melee attacks including spin attacks will no longer sweep through walls or objects. This was the first of many changes to melees and one that would negatively impact the spin twin staples. It didn't affect the Zenny Star too much, as with a better placed disc, you can still cover a good distance and strike enemies, but it also means you can't toss the disc anywhere as some geometry would block the waves from reaching enemies. But with the changes to melees afterwards, range got a nerf to many weapons, as prime range is now a fixed boost instead of being percent based, so this means most melees sit within a fixed radius. The Zenny Star was hit hard because its flame disc wasn't as big anymore. Life Strike healing on Heavy only meant the Zenny Star's niche and healing capabilities were dead, and with the new combo system, the Zenny Star had received a mechanic change. Now, the disc duration scales off combo, so higher combo means higher duration, but the base duration was now set to 10 seconds. This meant the Zenny Star had to mod for combo building, which took up moss slots that would otherwise be used for damage, attack speed, or range. It also doesn't help that the Zenny Star is a slow heavy blade and was never used much for its actual melee strikes, so building combo was pretty rough. As a result of these changes and better weapons releasing in the future, Zenny Star pretty much died. There was some use of Divara boosting the damage again, but its meta presence was very much dead. Even with the introduction of Tenokai, no one uses the Zenny Star outside of specific setups like Mag, but the power of the combo has been drastically reduced. It's slow, has low damage, and its flame disc gimmick fell off hard. And worst of all, its Riven isn't even 1.5 yet. After all these years, you'd think its dispo would be maxed out, right? Regardless, I think there's some ways to amend the situation, and Malistic has showcased an interesting Wrathful Advanced Roar setup, using Gas Electric on the Flame Disc to proc Influence, a setup that is quite nice and brings a ton of nostalgia to a once forgotten relic. Aya Vita then made a pseudo response, making the Flame Disc more utility based by using Melee Vortex, which amplified the Zenny Star's utility properties. Then Gamble showed a full status variant, using Saren's multitude of buffers as well as melee exposure, giving the disc great amounts of status damage. To which Nev followed up using Furious Javelin, Wrathful, and Primer for DPS on Heavy Swing. 
While all of these setups are great and brings any star to a new light, there is one thing I've noticed. The disc. When people build for Sunny Star, it's usually focused around the disc or using the disc for an elemental combo on the melee, which now leads us to my pseudo response. Today, I bring you a full hack and slash Zenny Star without the disc. Upon releasing the disc on Heavy, the Zenny Star Melee loses the heat element, and anything that's attached to it. For example, if your Zenny Star is modded for electric, this means the weapon has radiation since it's heat based with the disc installed. So when releasing the disc, the Melee loses the radiation but maintains the modded electric. What's happening is the weapon is being split. The disc ejects keeping the heat and whatever is attached to it, while the melee portion maintains the remaining elemental mods. Or, if no elemental mods are present, the melee becomes impact and slash without an element. So now you can make use of melee influence without modding for gas electricity, which is where we now run Shock Trooper. Now you can use an electric mod instead and save the sub scene for something else, but that's a little bit too generic and has already been done by the others, so I opted for something different, just for the sake of the meme in my setup. The Zenny Star's melee damage isn't that great, in fact it's quite bad, considering it's one of the weakest heavy blades and the heavy blade stances were nerfed so it has a tough time doing anything on the base tail path on its own. Originally I planned to use Chroma, but even a thousand percent Vex armor wasn't enough. And I didn't want to use an armor strip or primer for Bane since I want to keep this somewhat traditional. And that's when Sajin recommended me Varuna. Varuna offers great melee boost, offering 100% critical chance, a crit multiplier bonus for a period of time, as well as increased status chance. This removes the need to run Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds and lets us focus more into damage. Since we're using Electric for Influence, we need as much damage as we can possibly get. This setup does not use Wrathful Advance, so we aren't worried about red crits. Even though it would be helpful, it's already been done. With Fangs, we can set an Elemental Bomb, however, it's not always going to proc Electric on an enemy, which is why we're using Shock Trooper as the main form of electricity with Fangs as backup. Now we're spreading tons of status while slashing our way through each enemy, making the entire map max for condition overload. Energy isn't a big deal since Lycast has Hunt provides energy from Equilibrium, and the survivability isn't a huge issue either with a max auger set. The reason I'm not using Catalyzing Shields is because I don't like the mod. So we're using a max auger set instead. This means the secondary is dedicated to auger pack and seeker for the final bonuses. And finally, using Tenokai to deal with the acolytes. Do note that upon Tenokai's swing, you eject or recall the disc. You don't lose any combo, but be mindful of the disc when spamming heavy this way. In our setup, once we recall the disc, our weapon turns from electric slash back to radiation, so influence when the disc is installed won't work. So the setup remains unique on that factor. And that's pretty much it, my setup and style of trying to make the Zenny Star great again.